Hello, it's Pete here, and today we're talking about shapes specifically abstract shapes. This is a great set designed by Tim Holtz. I know that it's been very popular with many of you, but I want to talk about how I interpret these shapes, how I see shapes, and how I put them together to get some very different effects. So this is the set itself, pretty comprehensive. Now, before, before we look at the set, before we look at some of the things that we made with this, I just want to talk about shapes in general because I did, uh, I started my professional life as a cartoonist. So because of that, I see, uh, kind of see the world in a different way when it comes to shapes anyway. But let's, let's take these, for example, some very, some, now these are from, uh, from our framelit sets, circles. Um, we've got, ellipses as well so if we start with something like that what can we create just just with very simple shapes like this well let's take a look at for example okay so we've cut a circle and then another couple of circles straight away hello what's going on there it's quite a famous one and that's just shapes and that's how, as a cartoonist or as an illustrator, you would start off. You would start off with the basic shapes before adding the detail. But this is the crucial part. Now, let's take, for example, let's say we took this black circle and we made a cut there, right? And then we take that same circle and then we make a cut by there. And then we take, say, this one and made a cut by there. What that will give us is something like this. Now, let's start putting these together, shall we? So, okay, okay, this is coming together now. So we'll put the other two. There we are. So by being a bit creative with these, with these ovals, these ellipses, call them what you will, we can create something very, very recognizable. And that's how, that's how it works. That's how it works up here. So that's how I see shapes and how I interpret them. Now, as I said, this is something which, which I've been doing for quite a while now. So if you take two basic shapes like circles and hearts, and we do have frameless circles and hearts, of course. So if I take this die and cut this shape, and then I place the die back on the shape, say in the center there, what I'm gonna get when I cut that, are two slightly different shapes. One is a crescent and one is kind of a leaf shape. It's amazing how much you can do with that. And if you think of the same with an ellipse as well, you know, we, we, can, we can really get creative with these. So let's have a look at some, some things that I did in the past, just using those. Now that one, this guy, that's just, that's just circles. So you can see there, I've trimmed the circles down. You can see the headband. Those are that, that leaf shape that we described earlier. So by changing the size of the circles, we can get all these things. You can see all these, the eye, everything, the ears, the earring. It's all based around that circle. This one, for example, this lovely fox. You can see the circle there, and I've used the same circle to cut into that to create the face. The leaf shape creates the ears. This is a half circle. Here I've used, obviously, a scalloped circle, but it's the same principle. It's the same principle. And once you start to see the shapes like this, it's amazing what you can create. Now, let's take a heart. Okay, so, so this one. This is our heart's framelit set. And you can see which one I've used to cut this heart. Now, if I take that heart and I cut it in half, I get two shapes like this. Well, what can we do with that? How about that? That is all hearts, everything, except for the two dots for the eyes. Everything there, so look at the ears. That's, that's half a heart. The carrot is half a heart. The hands are a smaller heart. The feet, again, the body is half a large heart cut in half. But the nose, the teeth, the head, everything, even the tail, it's all about these hearts. Now we could go, we could go further down that route there's a little mouse. You can see everything there. It's all hearts. The body and the head, the same heart, cut in half. Now, if we take the circles and ellipses, how about that? That's just circles and ellipses. Apart from this, the unicorn's horn, 
There's nothing else there. That's what it is. Obviously, it's a big leap from what I showed you to get to something like this. But if you play around with that, if you start to see the world in shapes like this, then there's no reason why you can't do that too. So before we get onto abstract shapes, I just want to talk about abstract faces because this was a die set that came slightly before. Um, and it was something, again, that was hugely popular. It had a range of different shapes and squiggles and so on and so forth. And this is the image that was on the packaging. And a lot of people, they, they saw that, they loved it, and that's what they did with it. But, but we took it, um, a step further. So I started up, I looked at this, obviously I created images very, very similar to this. But as I started working with it, I started to see some new possibilities. So the initial ones, I went down a very kind of mixed media route. You know, I used lots of acrylics and luster waxes and so on and so forth to get that sort of thing going on. Then I thought, well, they're just beautiful shapes, you know, for creating backgrounds. So I did something like that, and then I thought to myself, oh, it kind of looks like uh, a Matisse, um, who's a great French artist, obviously. So I created that, and um, now it's kind of, all right, it's not exactly like a Matisse, but the spatial awareness and what have you. And then I started to see the shapes, and somebody said to me, somebody said, oh, you know what, they, it kind of looks like a Picasso. So from there, I went and I created a Picasso in all those Picasso-esque colors and so on and so forth, um, using those shapes, cutting them, being creative in the same way as I showed you with the circles and the hearts. So it's not just the shapes themselves, but the way that I cut into the shapes. Now, at that point I thought, well, let's do an artist series. Let's take this one step further. So, so we did Andy Warhol. So that's obviously a repetition of the same thing, slightly different colors in the eye makeup and the backgrounds and so on and so forth. And then how about Girl with the Pearl Earrings? So again, these shapes, cutting into shapes, using these swirls as sort of background, creating a pattern. So taking it one step further. So what's happening here is I'm, I'm developing the technique as I'm going along. Uh, I'm, I'm learning you know, new ways of doing it, trying to, trying to just push it beyond. Then we had Frida Kahlo, that wonderful Mexican artist. So you can see there's some 3D flowers in her hair. And again, and I thought, well, let's bring this bang up to date. So we did a Madonna. Um, obviously, when I said I was a cartoonist, I also used to do caricatures. So that makes things uh, a bit easier for me. And then finally, the last, the last one I did in this series was the late great Amy Winehouse. So it's incredible what you can do uh, with, with, with just basic, basic shapes, you know. But that was the abstract faces, so that's slightly different. What, what I did with those, I mean, obviously my training as an illustrator came to the fore with that. But it's really about the abstract shapes that is the latest set that we want to talk about now. So let's circle back round to the abstract shapes. And remember, Prior to this was abstract faces. Before that we had media marks, scribbles and splats. All of these styles, they, they all work together. Everything works together. And that's a big thing that Tim Holtz has, is about continuity of ideas so that you can add to your collection and get really super creative with these. Um, now, that's the set, obviously. We, we've taken a look at them. And I started to look at these and I, I saw these wonderful leaves and what have you. And the first thing I thought about was that sort of naturalistic kind of thing. So I did some, I did some mixed media where, where I used uh, some of the little elements in the background. I used them together with this wonderful alphabet, uh, which is also a Tim Holtz die set and something like that. So, you know, that, that kind of thing is obvious, you know, putting things together like that to create those mixed media backgrounds. But then I started to think about the more, the more organic shapes. So I thought of, and obviously, like I said, that, that, that kind of leaf thing, that jumped out at me. So I created just a couple of cards like this. This was the next step in the journey. Um, I thought, yeah, that's a lot of fun. So uh, let's, let's look at some other flowers. So flowers that I can use to create individual petals. And I've gone for some very sort of contemporary uh, looking color palettes as well. So from there, I thought, well, they do create great patterns. 
So I went slightly monochromatic with that. So that's just creating a background pattern. That's another way of using it. Here's another one. Again, it shows very minimalistic, very sort of modern contemporary color palettes. And then finally that one. So that was my little series of background patterns. And then when I'd done that, I put them together and made a tiny little landscape because I was starting to see the clouds. So the shapes were starting to take form for me. I started, as I worked with them, I started to see different possibilities for different shapes. Now, I started to think back to the abstract faces and I wanted to create some, some sort of abstract modern art pieces because obviously when you look at the original set, you, you can see an eye in there, whether it was intended or not, but that, that's what it says. So. I went for this kind of thing, very modern, abstract faces. And then I circled back and I saw, I started seeing cacti. Don't ask why, but they do make great cacti, you know? Um, mixing those wonderful greens and some of, the, some of the lovely patterns to get the texture we're looking for. That's a really simple thing to do. You guys can do that. You can see these shapes, you can create the patterns. You can make some wonderful, wonderful cacti with that. But I was thinking, I was thinking more about, about birds. Suddenly, I saw a bird and I saw a chicken. So let's take a look at that because you see that bit there? I saw that and it said chicken. And then I started to think backwards and think, well, how can I turn this into a chicken? You can see all the shapes going on, all the patterns. And then next up, we did a toucan. Um, this one, uh, this one, it's the simplest of all, but I think it's one of my favorites. There's a lovely seagull there as well. So let's do another seagull, a seagull carrying off an ice cream. That's nearly happened to me a few times. Um, then we did an owl. So, and the last, well, next to last one was this, was this lovely pheasant. And I liked, I liked the energy in that. I, it looks like it's running along. It really does. So. The legs, I was looking at the legs and I thought, oh, you know what? We could do perhaps um, a flamingo. And this, this is the cut. I'm gonna show you how to recreate this in a second and how, you know, how the mind works to, to put these shapes together to get there. Um, the last one I did in this series, I had to do a doggy. It doesn't look my, like my cockapoo tilly, but, but it has the same sense of fun. And it's lively, it's, you know, it could almost be leaping off the card. Now, going back to, circling back to the abstract face, I wanted to do some kind of, almost like cartoony type things. So I did these kind of hipster kind of cuts, which, which was a lot of fun. And then somebody said to me, hey, you know what? That looks like Jordan. Now Jordan is a good friend of ours, he's an engineer, wonderful guy. Um, and then, so I went away and I did this. We, we did a slight caricature. There's, there's Jordan there, trust me, I'm an engineer. And because, because I had the beard, somebody said, oh, do one of Josh. So there's our good friend, Josh, right there. And then one last thing, this is one that I did for Valentine's, which is Slash from Guns N' Roses. Born in Stoke-on-Trent, who'd have thought it? But there we are. So that's, that's just a series that I've created with these. There'll be a lot more to come from this because once you start to see these shapes, once they start to take form, that's when the ideas pop out. And you know what? We have had some, some wonderful things. You, you have sent us things that you've created with these shapes and it's always, it's always great to see that. So, so please keep them coming. But I'm gonna show you how I kind of put all those together. We're gonna create that flamingo now. Okay, so we're gonna create the flamingo from this set. Let's take a look at some of the ones I'm going to need. Obviously, that's the wing. That's the wing. This is the body, the head. I need that for detail. That's going to be the legs, believe it or not. So we got all of these pieces. Uh, there we are. So I think, oh, we'll take that one as well. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's what we're gonna be using here. So this, this is my flamingo, writ large. So this one I need for the detail. There you go, that's it. Now you might, you might be struggling to think at this point where the flamingo is gonna come from, but it will all come together. 
So before we start, I want to talk about color palettes because that is quite important. And when you're working with shapes, particularly complex shapes, it's important that it's quite minimal. So what we've got here, we've got the two pinks, we've got the ivory and we've got the black. And that's all I'm going to use to create this flamingo. Let's just put those to one side. Now, I have pre-cut using, using this wonderful shape, this wave or rainbow shape. So I pre-cut that and I'm going to Actually, let's put some glue onto my media mat. Uh, now, whether you want to use adhesive sheets, double-sided tape, that's entirely up to you. I'm just going to use, use this, and then I'm going to place that over a piece of the light pink card. And that's going to run through my machine because I want to make the background pattern before I do the die cutting itself. So let's take this wing and you can see how that pattern is created. I'll try and get that in there, something like that. I'll bring in my big shop machine, which I'm using today. So we've cut that through the two layers and you can see because I did those pre-cuts it's pretty spectacular it's better than just a plain old shape now again we'll apply a bit more glue because what I'm going to do I'm going to create the hat which our lovely flamingo is wearing so put that wave obviously that was die cut with that one and Again, one of the one of the rainbow shapes. So we'll pop that onto there. Now for the hat, I'm going to use these two dies. You can see how these go together. So I'll place that one here, and this one maybe like so. So the great thing about this is there's nothing. It doesn't have to be, there's no hard and fast rules about where or how you place these. It's entirely about up to you, just, just have some fun. It's always going to look great. Anyway, so we've got those two in place. Sandwich between my plates. And into the machine. goes just like that. Yeah. So these are some of the shapes which I've pre-cut just to speed the process up. Now this one, I only need the dots. I don't actually need the shape itself. So we'll pop that to one side. There's one more cut, one more cut to make. Um, but this one, this is gonna create the sort of funky 60s sunglasses. And I'm gonna trim that in half. So sometimes it's okay to cut these shapes down, whether you're using scissors or whether you're using a die cut. Now, this is gonna form the beak, but flamingos, they have a black tip on their beak. And the way I'm gonna do that is by, and these were obviously cut with the same die. I'm gonna take that same die and place it on there like so. So we'll pop that again into the machine, making sure it's where I want it. Again, accuracy is not hugely important. It's more about an impression. So you see how this die is cut into that one. So I discard that one lives to fight another day. And I will actually place this on there like so, and that will create the black tip of the beak. So there we are, we'll pop that tip there. 
And here are the sunglasses. Now, I want to create little highlights the way the sun catches them. And remember, remember this shape that we cut? These are what I want. I want these little circles. These are going to be my highlights. Very, very useful die to have this one. in the glue and then the other one and that one can go there there you go, there you go. now these this this is the legs of my flamingo and what i'm going to do i'm just going to trim all the way down and I don't have to be completely accurate because it actually it actually looks quite good if you just leave those little bits in place there we are you can do this with a craft knife or you can do it with scissors but if that was a perfectly straight line it would look cool but like that wow that is really cool now this this is where we need to be a little bit creative because because what I'm going to do first and foremost I'm going to take this one away and then I'm going to think about the bend of the leg how that's how that's going to look so I'm cutting away the first one two, two three and then I'm leaving that last one like that so let's trim that away and then I'm going to cut away all of these. So that's, that's the second leg. So that's like the thigh and when the foot comes out now. There we have it. That's all my pieces all ready to go. There you go, that's it, all done. Really simple, really straightforward. It's easy when you know how, isn't it? But I think if you work with these shapes, you'll start to, your mind will start to work in that way and you'll start seeing them differently. Let's take a look at the, the finished card. And we were talking at the beginning of this about some of the different sets that Tim has come up with in the past. That circle there, that swirl, that's from Scribbles and Splats. That goes back a few years now, but if you have it in your stash, good for you. Um, but yeah, really simple, really straightforward, lots of fun. So there we have it, folks, abstract shapes. So you need to train your mind to see shapes in a different way. And what is so cool about a set like this, it unleashes your creativity that's very much what tim is all about so we could have a flamingo die which is cool and we have had very cool flamingo dies but now you can create your own so start seeing the world start seeing the possibilities in different ways this one's abstract shapes we've had abstract faces media marks all those great die sets go back take a look at them see what leaps out at you and i'm sure this is something that Tim Holtz will be doing in future as well, extending on this and sort of tweaking at your creativity. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'm sure, and if you want any more inspiration, there's lots of stuff on all our social media platforms as well. So keep watching. Thank you. I've been Pete. See you again soon.